come to college or college is your best, you know, uh, uh, avenue or anything. No, it was just, it was the best avenue until someone created another lane and another avenue to go down. And that's what these kids are doing. They're creating other avenues for themselves. And, and, and eventually, eventually, these things are going to become a threat. I don't think these this is going anywhere anytime soon. It's not going to be a fad or anything like that. It's going to be a problem. It's going to be a problem. So proud of the young man, though. I mean, I hope everything works out uh, and, and and he accomplishes goals and he do it the way he, need, he needs to do it. And he has all the success in the world. So uh, the NBA. So the NBA uh, has decided or not decided they're they're thinking about this. Uh, and, and I'm really interested to see. Uh, what other people might think, what might think about this, because I'm at this point not feeling it uh, too well. Uh, Adam Silver, again, the commissioner of the NBA, uh, saying he is considering some type of soccer-inspired midseason tournament. So, uh, well, and actually, there's two ways that they're talking about doing this thing. Is uh, one is a midseason, and one is oh, right at the end of the season. So, uh, a midseason tournament. I think it was more like a Final Four. Uh, and then at the end of the season, more kind of like a tournament, like a play-in. You know, if you're on the cusp or you're trying to get into the playoffs, uh, something that is, you know, maybe going to catch the eye. You know, um, not necessarily an NBA fan because, or a basketball fan, I should say, because if you're a basketball fan, you're going to watch basketball regardless. But kind of catch, you know, that 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 fan or, or that person – uh, that doesn't watch the NBA, you know, on a regular and, and just be intrigued by it. So they're trying to just, again, create another lane like we were just talking about uh, with the uh, with the kids. They're trying to create something a little bit different, uh, something that might be, you know, enticing to to the viewer or anything like that. But I'm a little lost on it. I, I mean, and, and when I say lost, I, I really mean I'm I'm a little I'm not on board with it. Obviously, I would need to see, you know, what else is out there and a little bit more detail as far as like what they want to do. And obviously, this thing is in the in the uh, first stages. It, it could just be thrown off the table and we never hear about it again. But um, I'm old school on this one. You know, I, I can see maybe if you want to shorten the games instead of 82 games, you want to shorten it down to a few more games. I mean, so you can maybe do something with, with which they already are doing, but you can do something with, you know, the back to backs or anything like that. But uh, I don't think I would really just be like, man, I got to watch that tournament, you know, that in season tournament. Uh, cause one, what is up for grabs? What is on, what is on the line that is going to interest the players and also the fans, you know, not exactly the same way, but in the same fashion or in the same realm, if you will, that an NBA championship would, that's the whole thing about going through, going through the season, uh, going through the uh, travel, going through the journey, and getting uh, the ring, and at the end you're going back and viewing that. I don't know if if a team is going to be like, well, hey, remember we won that midseason award or anything like that. So uh, it would take some time. I, I'm not totally, you know, toned, uh, uh, turned off, you know, by the whole situation. It just I need to look, know a little bit more. Uh, what they're going to be doing with it. And I think we'll find that out later. But I do like that what Adam Silver is at least trying to do. He's trying to, you know, keep the lead relevant. He's not just going to get complacent and just sit there and say, well, we're fine. We don't need to do anything, you know, and just live off of, you know, hey, we got Kevin Durant and we got LeBron James and we got Steph Curry, you know, and, and all that stuff. No, he wants to, you know, keep the lead interesting. He wants to keep it trending. He wants to keep it uh, uh, ahead of the curve. So I, I applaud him on that. I just in season at the end of the season, cause I mean, after 82 games, even if let's say they reduce it into 72 games, cause obviously you're going to have to reduce it. Uh, I think if you're doing uh, a tournament at the end of the season for like a play in, uh, if you will, 
after you watch those many games and it's just like, do I really want to see these teams in the playoffs? I, 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 I may want them to stay out of the playoffs because I, I, I'm not going to be happy. So that, but they're going to figure something out. So I will, we'll see uh, uh, what they say or what they do, you know, about that. Uh, last up uh, on the docket is uh, the Houston Rockets. The Houston Rockets are uh, in the news because Daryl Morey, uh, GM of the Houston Rockets, has basically said that um, everyone, everyone is up for discussion. All the players, all the draft picks. Now, there's one thing I do not believe about that, and that is everyone. Uh, you know, James Harden is up. Uh, you know, if you're going to trade James Harden, you're getting back something just stupid, ridiculous, and it's not a bunch of draft picks. So I do think the safest person on this team would be James Harden. Now, the rest of the guys, your, your Eric Gordons, uh, your Clint Capellas, uh, you know, uh, 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 P.J. Tucker, uh, and even Chris Paul, I think all these guys would be up. Uh, and if they find someone to take Chris Paul's contract that makes sense, do not be surprised if Chris Paul is, is, is not on the Houston Rockets team come next season because he's scheduled to make $44 million. Uh, and, and, and honestly, what I think that the Houston Rockets did, they just took a gamble. They took a gamble and they said, let's give Paul the money. We're trying to win this year anyway. Uh, and, and if it don't work out and we don't win, then we'll, you know, we'll, we'll move on from that. But this was all about this season. I think, you know, going seven games last year, they thought they were just right there and, and they were going to win this year. And, and they had the Rockets, I mean, the, the Warriors number, and it just didn't work out that way. So I think there will be some trades. Uh, if I Clint Capella. Uh, I don't know if they're ready to move on from him just yet. Again, if they get like something just ridiculous, then yeah. But I think the first person that, that might go on this team is Chris Paul if they can uh, move him to uh, another team. So do not be surprised if you see some Rockets wearing some different colors uh, coming up. So, ladies and gentlemen, that is uh, pretty much what we got for the show. So before we go, though, we got to hand out the Big L Award. Yes, the Big L Award, which is the Big Loser Award that we hand out each week. Sometimes we do some loserous things in life, and it is just one of those things that we got to deal with, and we got to address it, and it has to be handed out. I've gotten it. Lopan has gotten it. Everyone has gotten it, you know, at some point in their life, and they've taken an L. So without further ado, let me tell you who's getting the Big L Award. Now, the I told you I might be a little bit biased, you know, on this. So let me just tell you, I'm going to, I'm going to give you the big L, but I'm going to tell you, you know, how this might could change. Okay. 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 But the, the big L award is going out to general, uh, general manager right now. And I guess president of basketball operations of the uh, Los Angeles Lakers, Rob Palinka. Now I said, I'm a little biased because Rob Palinka, I think a lot of people forgot, you know, forget this or maybe not know this, but Rob Palinka, uh, was playing with the fat five. He was coming off the bench for Michigan. It was him and Eric Riley and some other guys, but Chris Webber and them came in there and they basically just took over that whole situation and all that stuff. But Rob Palenka was on that team playing with those guys. Uh, he was a little bit older than Chris Webber and all of them. So that's why, you know, it's a little bit hard, but I'm going to have to give it out. Now, Rob Palenka was out there telling a story uh, about Kobe Bryant. Uh, and he was telling a story about Kobe Bryant and Heath Ledger. And, and he brought up about Heath Ledger, uh, you know, and his role in the Dark Knight as far as like how dark he went and how focused he was to go dark. And everyone remembered that character because it was a, he played that character extraordinarily well, you know, on it. Now, now, <laughs> Rob Polinka is telling a story and he's saying that... Kobe Bryant, which was his, you know, client when he was an agent, said, hey, man, set that up and get he for me, you know, to, to uh, 
meet up so I can talk to him about how he went dark and all that stuff and, and how he did it, you know, and all this stuff. Now, the thing that messed Rob Palenka up was that he said the Dark Knight movie. Kobe saw the Dark Knight movie. The problem with that is, unfortunately, Mr. Ledger passed away six months before the movie came out. So everyone's like, how could that happen? How could that happen? Now, side note, it is Kobe Bryant. Maybe he got a copy. He got a bootleg copy before it actually came out. That might be. But we're not, we're not going to stick with that. We're going to stick with Rob Palenka out there spewing just stories for no reason. That lion. Ooh, just dirty. You ain't got the lie to kick it, Craig. What are you going to gain from that story? First off, The Rock was there to talk to everybody. So how about you just let The Rock handle that situation? I think The Rock got a bunch of stories and enough stories to suffice for what they're trying to get. He didn't need the Kobe Bryant and the Heath Ledger story. So I guess Rob Lincoln was just like, I want to join in because everybody else telling the story. So I want to tell the story. No, I didn't get that at all. But let The Rock do it. Let you smell what he's cooking, and then he'll be all right. Now, you, my friend, you, my friend, I know everyone has a person that does this, that lies for no reason. Like, there is no unearthly reason to why you are lying. You will say, I play with Oscar Robinson. Rob Palenka, you wasn't even born when Oscar was playing. Like, why are you making up just obvious lies? It's something I just think he's probably lied. And if he lied to himself, he probably lied to himself so many times that he believes what he's saying. So for Rob Palenka out there telling lies, that's just ridiculous. You better take this big L. Ah, see? Another loser. Indeed. Indeed as well, Logan. Ladies and gentlemen, it is official. There's another one in the books. Another wait a minute show in the books. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. I, I really did. Rob Palika, what? 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 There's only one other person I know that lied like that. <laughs> and he's right next to me. Indeed. Yeah. yeah. At least you admitted it. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, make sure you enjoy the rest of your week. Uh, we're headed into the weekend like we always are. Uh, enjoy tomorrow's game. Enjoy uh, Raptors versus Warriors. I think that's going to be a tremendous game. Now, remember, if you have, if you forgot, Warriors and six. Book it. Got it. Got it down. I love that beat. Faro Jaro, man. I just love that beat. So, ladies and gentlemen, have a good rest of the week, man. Be good to yourself. That's that's my message for you. Be good to yourself because if you're not good to yourself, you can't be good to anyone else. So it starts with you and it ends with you. So be good to yourself. Treat yourself like you would want to be treated. And then you don't have to worry about anybody else treating you a certain way. Because you know what? Only you can have you at the end of the day. I thank some people. I have to thank all the listeners that was in the background. I appreciate you. And the people that was in the chat room. Melvin, uh, you heard the commercial, man. If you need, if you need, if you need your car fixed, man, holla at my man Melvin. Just go back, listen to the information, the contact information. Very easy to do. Uh, he took care of me. He can take care of you. So appreciate you for joining in. Uh, Mo Cheese, I see you out there. Big dog, appreciate you for joining in. Shelly B, I see you out there. Appreciate you for joining in. My man Ron from the up north. Canada 8. Appreciate you for joining in. H Rap B, I see you out there, big dog. I appreciate you for joining in. Said Galloway. Hey man. Watch these finals. And watch Hard Knocks when your Oakland Raiders are up there. DJ Knox, I see you out there, big dog. Miss Mocha Bella, I see you out there. Appreciate you for joining in. KC, I see you out there. Ladies and gentlemen, we are done. Two things as always. Stay positive. And push forward. And I'll let y'all later.
Lopan, put that cookie down. <laughs>